actually um, there has never been there have been so many flower shows all over the world we ourselves in our own country we have quite a number of flower shows but no one has ever done a show to to showcase uh, the forest especially the rain tree forest we have the oldest Malaysia has the oldest and uh, biggest rain tree forest and in our forest we have uh, so many orchids which sad to say many have been have been um, the word stolen from us is yeah there was no control we, we yeah. didn't care at that yeah. time but now we still have so much more inside so so beautiful there's this orchid called the necklace yeah. which is I cannot believe I didn't get to see it but I have books on it because it's in the Maliao Basin mm -hmm. which is quite we didn't have a chance to actually go in okay. but if ever um, we can take a long holiday I would like to go into this forest and, and spend time Patla shares the same um, interest so and the kind of trees the oldest trees that we have inside there the, it, and the kind of, of the flora and the fauna the animals that live inside you know we have to show people always think that I remember a time when um, people were upset with us for for um, you know growing more oil palm and killing yeah. not allowing our orangutans to to sort of breed more, you know, but it's it's not true. We actually have so much space, you know, and the orangutans are so happy. The orangutans are are well cared for. We um, our sanctuary looks after those that have been abandoned, yeah. you know, by poachers and things like that, and they quickly bring them and bring them up like their own babies, you know, and. Um, when they are big enough, they are released. They are taught. They are taught to find their own food, and, and I'm sure you saw. And then they are released, and they go back. And mm -hmm. many a time, they, or that particular time will come back. And sometimes they bring their own babies back too. Yeah, because they don't. And um, I am sure so many people don't know how the orangutan lives or where the orangutan lives. You know, actually, they, their nest or their house mm -hmm. is right on the top of the tree. And you can't see it unless you go by heli, but they don't allow you to do that because the noise will sure. upset them. We have so much to show. We don't, it's not only just Sabah and Sarawak. Sarawak has the Rainforest Jazz Festival. Yeah. It's, it's about jazz, it's not about yeah. the forest, but, it, but we have to showcase their forest. Their forest also is interesting. We also have the Balloon Forest, mm. which is another lost one. Yeah. Yeah. You see? So, well, if... Uh, if we, we believe this will go well. We know this will, will attract so so many things. Not only does it educate, yeah. it also attracts the tourists and it builds up tourists, you know, and it shows and we show them that we are not the kind of people they have mm -hmm. always imagined us to be. And after that we hope maybe in two years, every two years we'll hold host this. Mm -hmm. Because it's a it's a one year thing. Some are ambitious, they want us to do every year, but we have to allow the other forests to have the infrastructure. Yeah. Needs yeah. time. Yeah. Even the Denim and the Maliao, it takes you, uh, I was told, about six days to actually go into, into parts and, of, and more. That has not been done. So here, they already have everything. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. it's so beautiful. And then you know what we want to do is we want to get uh, students to come and help us, you know, to be able to tell the stories. Because, yeah. Every in the forest, there are many stories because the Orang Asli or the uh, people who live in the forest, they always have uh, a story to yeah. tell you about this tree, about why this plant is like this. And so you know, it's nice. Yeah. yeah, you know. So we can we can do, and we also want to have um, a conference mm -hmm. there. At a, at this conference, we we get good speakers to come. Um, and it could be an annual thing or biannual thing, whichever, uh, where we can actually talk about laws for the for trees. Mm -hmm. Like right now, you see people just cut trees and make to make way. KL has no trees left. They cut yeah. trees to make the road wider okay. and wider. Yeah. You know, so actually, um, UPM has come up 
with a very clever idea. Um, they have not an idea, actually they have been doing it all along. They value the trees. And they have a way of valuing the trees. So we hope to make this one a law where we value all the trees all around us so that if ever you want to cut that tree down, that is the price okay. of the tree. Plus you have to pay for the transfer of the tree because you're not be allowed to cut the tree down. You know? And actually I wish our developers can be more creative. The problem with us, we, we have creativity deep. All of us have. We don't want to use it. We only, we only see that dollar sign, you know. If they can build the trees around the houses, don't you think it's so beautiful? Yeah. Why do you cut all the trees? You know? In in if you look at all the um elite if you, you, you travel anywhere in the world, the elite always like to live far out, live into the forest and build a house around the forest. And we have it here and we cut it all down. You know, so that can save so much because by not cutting down everything, there's no erosion. 